You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Wiggle, wiggle, I like acorns. That is quite the intro line. Thank you to an anonymous child who sent that in. And obviously they didn't attach their name or age because with intro lines like that, uh, you probably want to stay mysterious in case people bother you for your genius. Um, it is an appropriate start, though, as I love both acorns and when you have more than acorn as well. Um, are you an acorn fan, Paul? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I yes. I think they're an incredible. I don't know how they fit all the tree in it, though. It's weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. They're like those little um, sponges or whatever that when you pour water on them, they grow. They grow massive. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You've you just got to bury it, pour water water on it, wait 100, 150 years. It's, Oak tree. It's definitely for people that have a lot of patience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you need a tree quicker than that, I would recommend one of those sponges. Um, <laughs> hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast and the only podcast filled with silliness uh, as professional comedians discuss the questions and topics that you want us to. Uh, this show is absolutely suitable for everyone from six years old all the way to 99. If, however, you are 100 years old, how many times do I have to tell you this is not for you? I've got a letter from the Queen. Yeah, blah, blah, we all know. But have you actually read it? If you read that letter, it's say, Dear 100-year-old Steve, go and listen to your own podcasts about how in your day everyone had a pet elephant or wore shoes on their head because it was better times. Go listen to them because Radio Nonsense isn't for you. Oh, and happy birthday, yours the Queen. Sorry, everyone. What I meant to say was welcome and thank you for listening. I am your host, Tien and Yeb, which is apparently very rude in Martian, uh, and that's why I'm not allowed to go to space again. So, uh, of course, uh, I have... I've got... Well... Meant to have two fantastic guests with me today, but one has uh, is unable to turn <laughs> no. up. So I have one fantastic guest, uh, which is um, Paul Duncan McGarity. Greetings to you. Yeah, hello. For a second there, I thought you were going to say we were going to have two fantastic guests, but one of them's Paul. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that to you. But Paul, I, I've got here that you are you are a history unearther. So I wouldn't want, you know, that's yeah. already fantastic I am as indeed. it is. How yeah. do you feel about the term history unearther? I mean, it, it, is, it covers all of the bases that you need to know. I, uh, I get rid of the earth, look at the history of that's underneath it and go, hmm, I've got very good at stroking my chin. I'm a very good chin stroking thinky man. That's a very, it's quite, it'd be quite a good job title as well. A chin, a professional chin stroker. Professional chin stroker. Yes. I, you ask me a question and I will, hmm, chin stroke. Now, Strong. I wasn't going to go there, but as we've got um, our, our other guest day wasn't able to make it, we have uh, put a pair of headphones around a water bottle to represent a guest just for the um, sort of getting the right atmosphere in the room. Um, I should just check, hello, water bottle. Yeah, great, good. I'm glad that you're pleased to be here. Um, but, Paul, I, will, I should ask, really, uh, for the listeners out there, should any of the children listening want to grow up to be a professional chin stroker, mm. what do they need? What tips would you give them? Chins. Chin, as many chins as you can get. That's a, that's a good start. Um, uh, you want to you want to make sure that you uh, really focus on uh, being able to cover all of the chin when you stroke it. Uh, the the people the mistake that people make is just just getting the very end of it and just just giving it a little tickle. No, no, you want to get the whole hand, stroke the whole chin, so people really know that you're thinking about stuff. That is fantastic. It was really good advice. Thank you, Paul, for Thank such you. expert um, advice. And I, I wanted to ask well, a couple more things. Firstly, obviously, this is radio nonsense, and it's a podcast. It's in sound form, and because it's in sound form, do you have a favourite noise that you'd like to share with us today? Oh, yes, it's absolutely the sound of a creaking door and what lies beyond. Oh, and could you uh, do that sound for us? Hello! Oh, uh, my goodness, well, what was behind it, <laughs> Behind Paul? it was I, a very happy Yorkshireman. <laughs> I, I didn't expect that. Exactly. That's quite impressive. There's something different behind the door every time you open every it. Single, hang on, can I just, um, can we open the door again, please? Of course please? you can, yeah. Go on. Uh, go away! I was an angry oh. Scotsman. I'm so sorry that oh, one. Oh, whoa, that's not nice. No, it was a bit of a surprise for me as well, that one. Wow, it's quite a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah, it's mostly uh, stereotypes. This is what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. We, we are missing a guest, but we've got the expertise of Paul Duncan McGarity here today who knows so many things. Um, and just to make sure that this show is 100% suitable for all ages, except you 100-year-olds, stop listening. Go back to telling people how, in my day, all the horses wore hats and no one ever said wombat. No one cares. Go away. Sorry, everyone else. Look, to prove this show is family-friendly, uh, Paul, what rude words will you not be using today? I will not be saying bum. I, I will not be saying kneecaps, which is very rude. Very kneecaps are very rude, especially yeah. to the worming community who don't have any kneecaps. No, that's what it is. It's you think of that, you, you think about you saying it, and there's all those worms going, ah, oh, yeah. knees. 
yeah. give, give knees a try. I'm glad. I'm glad you're. Uh, you, you know, you're uh, yeah. incorporating exactly. all the species. Similarly, we'll not be saying elbow or arm knee, if you like. Arm knee. Yes. Wow, you and whose arm knee? Yes, <laughs> this one that and one. this well, one. Oh no, but he's brought. You've brought your arm knees. I brought both my arm knees and my leg elbows. But you won't be mentioning them. No, we'll not be mentioning any of those. That is good. Excellent. We're very pleased to hear it. That just to prove this show is family friendly. I also will most certainly not be saying plop factory. Um, I would never say such a thing in my life. It's a very disgusting term, plop factory. So from here on in, no one will ever say pop, uh, plop factory. I think my father used to work in a plop factory. Did he? Yes. Did he? Delivering all the plops or was he, which part in the factory did he work Quality in? Quality control. Qu- right. Yeah, right at the end of the plop factory, he just, he stroke his chin. It's where I got it from and he'd be like, ah. Uh, that's a cracking plop. That's good. That's yeah. good. And how would you... So, did you say he stuck his finger in? How would you... He struck his chin. He, he struck his chin. Give it a really good think about it and just look at the So you could just do it just density. by looking at it. He wouldn't oh. have to, like, smell or taste. My or... dad's from a long line of uh, plop uh, admirers. Sure, sure. It's a very... I mean, it takes a lot yeah. of work to really know your plops. Mm, I'm think. the first person in the family to uh, to not follow in the... The plop appraisal. Oh, they must be very disappointed. Furious. Well, there you go. Um, we won't be saying plops anymore from no. now on. Uh, I definitely won't be saying plops uh, no. at all during this show. If you hear plop even once, please do tell the police. Um, so, look, that's the guests uh, for today. Oh, I should say, uh, water bottle. Uh, what rude word will you not be saying today? Water. Great, yeah. Uh, please don't say that. That's, that's actually disgusting um but there we go we've got our guests we've got uh, paul we've got uh, water bottle there's one other very important contributor uh, every week on this show and that is you the listener um, and every week we'd like you to send in the topics that you think that we should talk about the questions that you want answering and if you like please send in something you'd like me to say at the beginning and end of a show and very importantly any self-written jokes that you'd like us to read out details of where you can send all that will be at the end of the show and also is written in all the podcast blurb radio nonsense so uh, the very first First important question this week has been sent in by Sophia, aged 11. Um, and Paul, I think you're going to like this one. This mm. is very much uh, up your street or yeah. sort of uh, down your tunnel. I don't know what archaeologists <laughs> do. But it, look, uh, the question is, can you drill into the Earth's core? Now, she's Ooh. put, can you drill? So I'm wondering if that's you specifically, Paul? Can I? I've only got a very small drill, I'm afraid. So I, I, I don't think I could maybe borrow one, but I don't think I could go all the way down. What size of drill would you need to get uh, to the Earth's core? Um, very, a very long one. Uh, the furthest humans have ever managed to drill down is 12 kilometres, and that wasn't even through the, the, the skin bit outside. The skin bit, is that the what it's skin, known as? The yeah, earth, the earth skin. skin. Yes, we all know that that's the correct yeah. one. That's what, the worms live on the earth skin, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they call it ground in some places. <laughs> Fools. It's very weird. Very strange. Especially when it's on the top. Yeah. You can't call it the ground if it's on the top of all the other things. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're trying to get into the... Uh, Earth belly, and uh, no, we we just can't do it. I I definitely can't. I'd get tired. Sure. Have you tried using a spoon? That's not drilling. I mean, I could definitely uh, spoon my way down. Sure, sure. It's but a it's, totally the different technique, is, isn't can it? Can you drill into the Earth's core? And that is very yeah. different. Yeah. You give me enough spoons. I mean, I'll wear them out after time. You know, sure, sure. You've got to have a very, you've got to have 50, 60 spoons to get to the Earth's core. Come yeah, on. Yeah, or a handful of ladles. Hand, mm, I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> you, sure. You want to, once you get to the gravy layer, you, the ladles really come into their own. So let's just go, I just want to get this straight. So we've got the skin layer on the top. Skin layer on top. And yeah. then what comes next? Uh, it's just uh, uh, Miley Cyrus DVDs. Miley Cyrus DVDs, yep. okay. That yep. whole layer of there. Um, then it's the marshmallow level. Oh, uh, wow, that sounds good. Yeah, then the underground dinosaurs. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we all gr- know about them. Yeah, yeah, then the right. gravy layer. Then the gravy layer, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and everything's gravy. Everything's gravy. Right. Yeah. Uh, then there's a boiling hot magma. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't see that come in. Exactly. And does that keep the gravy warm? It, it does, but it, it, what happens is it, it moves around this sort of like a current. Uh, so it's, it's gravy with currents in it. Oh, that's disgusting. And no, it's not a very no good gravy. No one wants gravy with currants in it. And also, I, I assume it moves around at the right speed, so the gravy's always, like, Warm correct, at the top. But it's not, mm. like, got a skin. It's not turned all horrible. No, the skin's around the top. Yes, of course. But, yeah. the, but is that skin the gravy skin? Uh, no, that's a different skin. There are, there, there's, you, you don't want skin in some places, and you want skin in others. Sure, yeah. sure. Like, you know, like teeth. Yes, yeah. yes. Which, you, weirdly, is the very middle. There's one tooth. Just one? Just one Does tooth. anyone know whose it is? Or? No, but it's got a filling. Oh, that's a shame. I know. So whilst we can't drill down to it, someone has drilled it. 
Well, there you go. Um, I think we've answered uh, Sophia's question. You you couldn't drill into the Earth's I core. I couldn't, no. We might one day find someone who could. Probably, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, like I say, we've tried. The Russians tried in the 80s, and they only got a third of the way through the top bit, but we're still having a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you, I mean, because I've always liked the idea that if you if we drilled straight down from here, we'd end up in Australia. Yeah. Um, but it would be so, by the time you got to Australia, you'd be covered in gravy and marshmallow, yeah, and you'd be co- yeah. probably on fire. Worst thing is if you find out all the Australians have dug the other way and you've missed each other. That would be awful. You, yeah. you haven't managed to line it up. Yeah, and um, that would be pretty. All sad, of a actually. sudden, in England, they're all like, "Ah, oh, now nah, they've they've gone." Yeah, well, also, like, has anyone lined it up properly, or would we kind of dig and then go, oh, no, we're in the sea? Yeah, put a hole we, in the bottom of the sea and then all the seawater, gravy. Uh, and then gets cooked, yeah. yeah. And then you end up with, our, and then all the fish, fish might be quite happy. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what a fish view on gravy is. That's an old saying from where I'm from. <laughs> so you're as happy as a fish in gravy. <laughs> It's very good. Yeah, was that by the man behind the door, or was that just from? No, yeah, the very, the very happy Yorkshireman behind the door. Well, if you're coming up with phrases like that, it, um... he's delighting himself. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet he is. I bet. Um, water bottle. Any thoughts on the matter? Or water. Sure. Oh, I hadn't thought of that actually. That's a very good point. Water. Water. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I suppose you wouldn't like to be mixed with gravy. You're very pure uh, as a water <laughs> bottle. Uh, mainly like to contain water. That's fair. Okay, um, so, Sophia, uh, you obviously hadn't said in your question if you've managed to drill into the Earth's core. Uh, so please let us know if you have. Uh, we're, drill, obviously, you put in the question, but also if you've used spoons. Bring your guesses! Um, Our next question, which must be answered right now, uh, has been sent in by Ethan, age six, uh, or if he's standing on his head, age nine. (laughs) And uh, he has asked, this is a very interesting question, actually. Um, Paul, which Mm. train would you want to be? Mm, That is a good question. Yeah, well, you see, I know I thought about this before you answer, because obviously, you know, we know trains. I'm on our our trains, yeah. Yeah, they're like the long cars that are all stuck to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, And go along the tracks. yeah. Um, or they're like the planes without wings. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of sort of giant bikes. Scooters that have got a hat. Yeah, that's it. Scooter, scooters with a house. And um, But there are other trains out there which you might not oh, okay. know about. Um, the ones we were talking about just then were passenger trains, but there are, of course, ghost trains. Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, are how ghosts get around from yes. place to place. <laughs> um, so they're, they're or very... I've got to haunt someone in Birmingham just now. Yeah, I better get the Ooh. 223. Yeah, that's the, that is the noise they make. You knew very well. Woo-woo. Yeah, it's, uh, it's how they go. And um, and they don't have steam coming from them. That's just ghosts leaving to go yeah, for different stops. Yeah, getting off at each stop. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but people often mistake it as steam. Yeah. Um, and then there's also, I learned about, uh, recently about bogies, uh, which are wheeled wagons or trolleys. And oh, apparently yeah. there's two bogies on every train carriage, but I would have thought there's more than that because I normally leave several <laughs> whenever I get on a train. Um, so it's possible, I'm just saying, you might want to be a bogey or a ghost train. Yeah. Um, then there's also Train, which is a town in Bavaria. Oh, it's good. Uh, I, did, I was going to say that one. Wait, have you been there before, have you? No, but I just think f- top lads. Yes. Do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet it's, I'd like to know if it's got a train station, so you have to have a train <laughs> a train, train station or a train station, train station. A train to train? Yeah, a train to train station. Yeah. Where would you like to get the train to? I'd like to get the train to train, please. Mm. That would really annoy everyone that ever did tickets ever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be brilliant. I'd like a return to train. So um, there's also there's roller coaster trains. Yeah. Um, there's also a camel train, which is what it's called when lots of camels are lined up traveling together in a group. Oh, cool. Yeah. I hadn't even yeah. thought about that one. Yeah, quite a bumpy ride, I believe. Um, but that's a camel train. And then there's also, and this is my favorite, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you this one. Mm. There's an unidentified underwater noise known as train. Yeah, there's a whole series of unidentified um, underwater noises, uh, and they have all been detected by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, <laughs> using their Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. Right. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Or ipa <laughs> And one of their noises they have called uh, the train. So I'm going to find this for you. This is an unidentified noise. An unidentified noise. Here we go. It's not a train. It's not a train. But it sounds 
sounds like a train. train. Yeah. So could it be a train underwater? Mm. Or a, yeah, that's a, a ghost train. A ghost train that's just, just gone a bit far. Just gone a bit at, like is that off yeah. the rails? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It could be, it could be. It's, it's, there's something quite ghostly about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just someone who's got like a, I don't know, gone swimming, but he's going, oh, because they've stubbed their toe. <laughs> yeah, just, but they, they've stubbed their toe so hard they had to run into yeah, the sea. It's a whale that stubbed his fin. Oh, oh that's quite sad. Poor whale. Yeah. Whales always sound very sad anyway, because they're always going, oh. Oh, I'm so big. No hats fit me. Oh, I'm so big. I wish I could have a jumper, but it's too small. Like and they're just they're endlessly a bit miserable. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's a whale. That's a whale that's stubbed. It's like, there's a definite change. That's not a miserable noise. No, that's one that's like. So he was, he was already in a bit of a mood. He was like, oh, I got to go to my nan." I should say that the uh, the the Noah they believe that the origin of the sound is most likely generated by a very large iceberg grounded Ooh. in the Ross Sea. Um, that's what they believe. I think they're wrong. We've already sort of discussed what it probably is instead. Yeah. Um, but that's what they think it is. There's actually I didn't know about this. There's quite a lot of underwater unidentified noises, yeah. um, and they've got really good names. Right. There's one called the Bloop. <laughs> uh, there's the whistle, which probably sounds like the whistle. There's the upsweep. There's the bio duck. Bio duck. Yeah. And then there's the ping. Uh, <laughs> and then the forest growth, the the forest grove sound, moodus noises, and then the best one of all, the Julia. The Julia. Yeah, the Julia. And I'll play you the Julia because <laughs> it's it somewhere. Julia, Julia. Well, let, let, have, have a little listen. Sound like Julia to you? Do you know a Julia that would be that makes? <laughs> Hello, I'm Julia. <laughs> it's me, Julia. <laughs> Julia's snorkeling and she's like just happily going. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> she's singing her underwater theme. Yeah, she's got. Some people swim with a song. Yeah, well, I mean, I do. Whenever yeah. I'm underwater, I've got my... Do you find Swimming you... underwater, I'm now what I'm swimming. Got yeah, to yeah. do the swimming. Look, <laughs> there's a fish, and now there's a rock. Like, it's you've got it's to amazing that you're able to both sing and not uh, have to bother with uh, breathing all that water in as well. No, no, I keep um, spare air for when spare I get Spare air. <laughs> yeah, I store, it, um, I store it in my cheeks. Oh, you're yeah. a hamster swimmer. Hamster swimmer, yeah. Oh, they sometimes also bum cheeks and mouth cheeks. I've got extra yeah, reserves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then just depending on how far I'm swimming and how much I want to sing, yeah. obviously, because you obviously. have to use air for both. So uh, uh, back to the original question, I feel that like we should, uh, I hope Ethan doesn't mind this tangent because it's very yeah. important. Well, we were having a train of thought. Oh, my goodness, Paul. <laughs> That's my unidentified noise, which I'm going to call the awesome. And, uh, Paul, is that would that be the train that you would like to be? I think it's one of the, a really good one. If I couldn't be that one, I would be the... Uh, Golden Eagle Danube Express. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Is that, and that's a real train, is it? It is a real train. And I'm afraid that, it's a very boring passenger train. But driven by eagles yeah. or, or <laughs> takes eagles from place to place? It goes across, uh, it, it does the Trans-Siberian Railway. Oh, my and goodness. Yes, they have people who play harps on the train. Wow. Yes. Even in the quiet carriage? Even in the quiet carriage, but very quietly. That would be fine. I, I'd be really annoyed if I'd booked yeah. a quiet carriage ticket they and someone's there going, fingers. blinky, 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 <laughs> get off, I'm trying to read my book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they just cover it all in, like, uh, tissue paper. So it's like, boop, 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 boop. Silent harping. Yeah. It's a very uh, acquired skill, actually, mm. silent harping. It takes a lot of training yeah. uh, to be able to play the harp in such a beautiful, silent way. Yes, but they have restaurants and they have bedrooms and they have toilets. Everyone's got toilets, but this one's got really good toilets. What makes them really good? Really good. What makes them really good? Yeah. Uh, it, instead of flushing it, yeah. it just ca- you can just look out the window and it just goes. Boom, That's exactly what I. Hope. What I really want from a loo on a train <laughs> is I want to know where it's gone. Yeah. Because often if I go for a wee on the train, then yeah. you leave it and you're like, but where's that? Where's it gone? Where's that gone? Yeah, yeah. And I would really like it to either at the stop they just fire it out at an unsuspecting passenger yeah, yeah, yeah. who's about to get on the train, or they just or just somewhere in the countryside as you're going past, say a farm, and you just hear a cow exactly. go, "Hey, moo," you know. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah, you can just look out the window and just say, "Hey." Yeah. 
I think in trains, I really think that's missing. Same with aeroplanes as well. Like, if you have a poo on a plane. <laughs> uh, I said poo. I didn't say plop. No plops on this show. No. Um, but if you have a poo on a plane, I kind of want them to say, your poo landed in Belgium. <laughs> so, you know, like, you can get those little maps that uh, show you where the... If you're in a plane and you're, you're on it and it shows you where you are in the world, yeah. it should have all the dots of all the passengers... Where they've plops of, I mean, sorry, uh, poos. I'm so How sorry. You, Paul, I'm, I'm so really sorry. Like, it's all right. I'll edit. I'll edit that out. I'm know. down on my kneecaps asking you to. I'm. I'm sorry. Oh I did goodness, it again. Paul! I'm sorry. I will try harder. I'll put some elbow grease into. I'm oh, so Paul! sorry. Oh well, this is ruined. Now <laughs> no one under a hundred is going to be able to listen to this, and that's exactly not what we wanted. <sighs> Unbelievable. Anyway, um, Ethan, I hope those help you all choose which train you want to be. Unless this was a secret test by you, a magical wizard who turns people into the trains they want to be. Um, unless they've chosen rubbish ones and now we've all failed and we'll have to be bogeys. Uh, although I'd argue that Paul probably hasn't failed and he will now become the Golden Eagle Danube Express. Mm-hmm. What would be the first thing you did if you woke up tomorrow you're the Golden Eagle Danube, Danube Express? I'd be shooting poops into the uh, countryside. Fair play, Paul. Fair play. It's the best answer. Ethan, I hope... I hope you're saying that qualifies him straight away. Um, it is now time for the best jokes ever, as sent in by you. Comedy Club for Kids doesn't just do stand-up shows for children, but we also run, um, but we also run workshops and teach you, the many adults of the world, how to be stand-up comedians. Uh, you can find out where we're doing a workshop near you at our website, Comedy Club Number Four Kids UK, and you can also buy the Comedy Club for Kids Guide to Being a Comedian: How to Be an Unstoppable, Amazing Comedy Genius for just seven of your Earth pounds uh, from either our website or on various bookshop seller type places. Um, please ask a responsible adult before ordering seven hundred copies of it, with which to build a fort so that you can then perform stand-up in it. Um, or ask an irresponsible adult who'll probably be fine with you doing that, because that sort of thing. Irresponsible responsible adults do and um, for this podcast though i would love it if you sent in any self-written jokes that you would like us to read out um and if you do uh, much like with the topics and other suggestions we will pop a copy of our book in the post to you as a reward for your comedy skills um, this week we've had yet again some excellent jokes sent through so our first joke uh, is from elizabeth age six uh, paul would you do the honors knock knock oh Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, before I read this, Paul, is this one of your doors or is this Elizabeth's door? This is Elizabeth's door. Okay, sure. Well, I'll play along. I just didn't want to... I don't even know what's behind this door. That's very exciting. Very exciting. Okay, uh, so if you go again, I'll play the other. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wee wee bum bum head. Whoa, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. (laughs) That's amazing. Took me quite by surprise. Yeah, I didn't expect a visit from Wee Wee Bum Bum Head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's nice it's... that he's popped by. Yeah, and also it didn't give any warning, which I think is a bit rude. Mm. I would have liked maybe a text or a Get message saying I'm going to pop by. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, just surprise visit, so... There you go. Nice to have him here. Well, thanks, Elizabeth 86. That is an absolutely fantastic joke. Um, And then uh, I believe we've got uh, uh, another joke from uh, George, age nine. Yes. Um... Uh, shall I do the stage directions as well? Uh, yes, please do, yes. Okay. Man! Doctor, doctor, I'm afraid of backstories. Oh. Doctor, how did it start? Man. Well, it all started with... When... Ah! <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. That is brilliant. That is very good. Thank you for those very, very funny jokes. And if you have a brilliant joke that you've made up all by yourself and you haven't heard from a book or a relative or a humorous pet um, and you'd like us to read it out, then please send it to podcast at comedyclub4kids.co.uk. Um, that's also the address to send suggestions for topics for us to discuss and any questions that you need answering, as well as fun ways to start and end this show. So please ask a grown-up type to help you drop us an email and then once they've done that, you can help them use their phone or computer properly because it probably confuses them, let's be honest, and they spent too much time doing grown-up boring stuff like trying to put their socks on or complaining how tired they are and getting all confused. Um, the final question for today's wonderful guests, uh, Paul and Water Bottle. Water Bottle, I realise I didn't ask you um, your favourite type of train. Water. Yeah, fair, good call. I hadn't thought of that, actually. Yeah. Um, so for Paul and Water Bottle, though, the last question uh, has been sent in by Gabrielle Aged six. There's a lot of six-year-olds taking part in today's show. Mm. Or are they 100-year-olds in disguise? <laughs> Just because you've had a lot of time to work out a clever disguise, it doesn't mean you should. Stop it. Stop listening. Sorry, of course they're not 100-year-olds. Um, they're definitely six-year-olds. And I'm pretty sure Gabrielle is definitely six, uh, as she sent in this question in song form. Do you know that how is coming? 
So there you go. That is a, <laughs> that is a Gabrielle asking, do you know how camembert is made? Yeah. I also happen to know, a little bit of inside information, that Gabrielle uh, has a nickname Brie. And so we've got Brie asking how camembert is made. That is amazing. Yeah, which is, but part of me then wonders, is this like a spy thing? Is mm. it like one cheese trying to work out the other cheese's strength? Well, they're based on each other. Are well, they? Wait, yeah. who's, wait, who's the OG? Who's the OC? Brie. Brie is the original Brie cheese. came first, and then someone in Normandy in uh, France was like, I want to make Brie, but I want to make it in Normandy, in a place called Camembert. And, he, and then a priest came and said, I know how to make Brie. And he said, teach me! And then they made Brie that was in Camembert, so they called it Camembert. That's amazing. So they basically stole Brie. Yeah, but made it smaller. Brie's in massive wheels. Yeah, you can get huge wheels of Brie that you can yeah. like attach to a truck or something and drive yeah. very slowly as it melts along slowly. the road. Very slowly. Not in summer. No, no. Oh, can you imagine the smell of braking with a Brie wheel? Oh, goodness. I'm going to be late. My wheels have melted. <laughs> you stopped at a traffic light and people with crackers are coming towards you. Leave terrifying. off my wheel! <laughs> That's like a horror film right there. <laughs> so I suppose the question is, though, we, we, we now know that Camembert is a Brie imposter or a Brie mm. wannabe. A uh, wannabe. Brie poster. Yeah, Brie poster. Brie poster wannabe. Um, <laughs> wannabe is much better. Wannabe, yeah, wannabe. And uh, now we, we've... We, we, the question is, do you know how camembert is made? Now, before we answer this very important question, mm. um, I found out some facts about cheese, which I didn't know. Cool. Looking this up. Um, one is that I didn't know some cheeses are illegal in the USA. Yes. Yeah, including camembert. Camembert is one of the cheeses. Yep. Any cheese that's under 60 days old. I know. Yeah, so if you've got, like, cheesy feet, but you've had them for less than 60 days, if you wash them 59 days ago, yeah. and then you try and take them into America, you'll right. be banned. Wait a day. Yeah, wait one day, and then you can take your cheesy feet into America. Yeah, exactly. Um, but some cheeses are illegal. I mean, imagine, like, how awful would you feel if you got, like, you've been arrested for carrying cheese. <laughs> what are you in prison for? I've done a burglary. What are you in prison for? Oh, I call people rude names. What are you in for? I put a cheese up my shirt and ran into a <laughs> America. I carried the camembert across the border. They couldn't stop us. I was running so <laughs> fast. They brought us down with a well-placed cracker. Took you, out my well, kneecaps. The thing of if you had Brie wheels yeah. and you, you're crossing over and, and you, think, <laughs> you think, well, they're just my wheels. But then as you go, they melt and you get caught out. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Do you know why I stopped you? No, I can't think about it. You've got smelly Brie wheels. <laughs> no. It's very, very dangerous. So there you go. So that's a little bit of tip for any of you out there. If you're going to America, don't carry a camembert in your hand yeah, luggage. definitely don't. Or in your pockets. What else have you learned about um, cheese? I've learned that mice don't actually like cheese. What? They prefer sweets. No. Yeah, I know. Like all six-year-olds. Yeah. So if you're listening to the show uh, and you like sweets more than cheese, you're probably a mouse. Yeah. Um, or a worm or uh, well, we've been through all that. There's lots of you listening <laughs> out there. Um, but yeah, they don't. They, they will eat cheese if it's there, hmm. but they prefer sweet-flavoured things. That's very nice of them. Like, oh, you've made an effort. I don't want to cause a fuss. I'll they don't it. like to upset unnecessarily no. mice. They very much uh, will be polite. Oh, they're good house guests. They've, 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 just the two of them together. Oh, they've put cheese out. You will have it stand. Stop asking for sweets. But you see, this does go against the fact that my, mice, while that's a lovely house guest thing to do, they do also wee while running around. Yes. Um, so if you have like a mouse in your house, that, that mouse doesn't even mean to wee, but it's just like, I'll go from here to there. Oh, no, wee! And then there's wee everywhere. <laughs> and they just do it. And that goes against, you think, what a polite mouse, you're going to eat the cheese, but now you've yeah. weed all over my shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know which what's preferable, really. I don't know. Just I, I don't think you invite them to a party. No, no, that's a good, very good call. Don't invite mice to your party, to your mouse party. Um, the other, I mean, this one you'll like, uh, Paul. Um, scientists have actually made cheese from bacteria collected from toes and belly buttons. Oh they've, no! They've successfully made it. <laughs> so next time you're like mum or dad saying, "You've got to have a wash because you really smell and your feet smell," you can tell them that actually. You're developing your own <laughs> cheese business, and uh, <laughs> you've got Cheetos, or um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you'd call a belly a belly button cheese. Oh, be- belly bells, belly bells, belly, belly bells, yeah, baby bellies, baby bellies, <laughs> yeah, just I'd... your whole belly wrapped in red wax. 
Oh, wow. That, yeah. would be <laughs> that would be amazing. And again, that would get you out of like sports day and stuff. Wouldn't yeah, yeah. It? Oh. I can't do the 100 meters or my tongue will melt. Yeah, I'm covered in wax. Yeah, that would make things quite difficult. So there you go. So the uh, the last one, the last fact is that the um, oldest known cheese uh, is from 1615 in China and was a bit like mm. cottage cheese. Um, and I don't know if it was like cottage cheese when they found it after it had been there for a long time yeah. or if it was originally... Like, like cottage, cottage cheese. cheese. Mm. I don't know. Um, Paul, uh, yeah. in your job as an archaeologist, have you ever dug up cheese? I've never dug up cheese. I'd love to dig up some cheese. It'd be really exciting. I've, d- I've dug up lots of bottles and, and like boxes for things that you would have had cheese in, but never the cheese itself. Do you think, would you eat it? I mean, if you found like a really good oh, cheese. I mean, just to see. Yeah. Like, just to see how what a cheese was like. I love cheese. What if it was all cheese? What if it was like 400-year-old cheese? I mean, uh, it'd be allowed into America. Yeah, obviously. but if I had 400-year-old cheese and I went to like a party and people were like, what's interesting about you? And I said, I have eaten 400-year-old cheese. Can anyone else say that? And then before you got to the end of the sentence, they'd smell your breath and they'd have died. And they'd be like, we know, we know you ate it. <laughs> Everyone has died. Your <laughs> breath is so disgusting. We haven't actually discussed how cranberry is made. Um, they turn it, they make They make a little block of cheese out of uh, like cow's milk and then they turn it over and over and over and over until it turns into a flat disc and then they leave it for thir- uh, three weeks after squirting it with some uh, mould and it turns into camembert. That's amazing. Yep. That is amazing. I thought they just took brie, cut it into a smaller bit, and <laughs> wrote on the top. I, I thought that's what they did. I thought that it was all a lie. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually. All that stuff of turning the cheese over and over is just misdirect. Yeah. It's like they get the, the blue tack that's white, the white yeah. tack, and then they just make it into a little pie, <laughs> and then they give it to people and put it in sandwiches. Delicious. Mm-mm. Tasty, tasty camembert. Um, so, Gabrielle, um, I guess we do know how camembert is made. We've got uh, three different answers, and I hope that is all of your questions answered satisfactorily. Satisfactorily, satisfactorily. Thank you so much to Sophia, Ethan, and Gabrielle for sending them in, uh, to Elisabetta and George for sending in jokes, and to Anonymous Child, possibly Worm, and to Julia for the intro and outro lines. Uh, Julia's one you'll hear in a minute. Um, of course, the biggest thank yous uh, go to Paul Duncan McGarity. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and to Water Bottle, thank you for being here. I hope you've had fun. Water, water. Good. And um, Paul, what are you up to that little people may be allowed to come and see? Uh, or, I mean, is there anything? Whenever I turn up to Comedy Club for Kids Live, that is when it will be suitable. You can also listen to my podcast, Ask an Archaeologist, which is suitable for little people to send questions in and ask about what archaeologists do. And uh, what stuff are you going to be digging up? Soon? Um, uh, we've been digging up some skeletons, and we're going to dig up some uh, houses and lots of other things. That sounds great. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. Uh, hopefully some cheese. Who knows? Oh. Hopefully. Um, Comedy Club for Kids does shows all over the UK and abroad with many very funny acts, uh, including Paul and Water Bottle. Water Bottle hasn't actually appeared yet, and possibly soon at a later date. Um, we are at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival throughout August at the Assembly Roxy at 5.35 every single day with different acts. Please come along to that if you're visiting the Fringe. Um, plus loads more shows all over the place from September onwards. So do check out comedyclubnumber4kids.co.uk to see when and where we're going to be near you. And please don't forget to tell everyone you know about this podcast, except for any 100-year-olds who need to stop listening and go back to spending forever writing down your age, because three digits is just silly. It's just silly. Sorry. I mean, please ask a grown-up uh, to help you like and subscribe to Radio Nonsense so that you don't miss an episode. And do send in your suggestions for topics, questions, intro and outro lines, and your self-written jokes to podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. Comedy Club for Kids presents Radio Nonsense. We'll be back next week. But before we go, one last thing from Julia, who's not put her age, uh, so I don't know how old she is, and I don't think she made that noise in the sea, but who knows? It could have been her. She could have been farting while out paddling. Who knows? Uh, goodbye. We're aware that we've failed. Bye. You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. Comedy Club for Kids Presents Radio Nonsense was recorded at the ACAR Studios in London. The guests were Paul Duncan McGarity and A Water Bottle. Music by Paddy Jervis, designed by Cal Prendergast, and hosting and writing by Tim. Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! It's the end. Um, oh, I managed to get all the way through it about saying Plop Factory, which is oh, quite it's good. It's amazing. I, you, you really managed to hold it together. It was really impressive. It was It was just, it made me excited in my kneecaps, in my elbows. Oh, Paul, no! no!